In this section, we're going to discuss the abdomen and the pelvis, particularly the groin region that we had not covered previously in the hip. The first part we'll start with in this section will be the third part that you want to do as a sequence and series, and that will be on the abdominal muscles. As we start with the abdominal muscles, I'm going to orientate my fin to the left so that the left side uh, that I'm facing of the patient is going to appear on the left. This will actually be his right side. So in this midline picture now, just below the umbilicus, where I like to start as my home position, you can see the rectus abdominis on the left and on the right with the midline raphe. We can see some peristalsis underneath of the uh, uh, bowel, and we can see subcutaneous tissue above. In both men and women, particularly if you're imaging older men and women, you want to be sure to assess this midline raphe as it can be significantly uh, widened and have diastasis uh, in women from having children and in from previous injuries in both men and women. Now we're going to follow, and you can see that the rectus abdominis is a fairly large muscle, and we can follow that muscle right over the mid portion of it, and we can follow it up superiorly as I do a short axis slide, and we can follow it inferiorly. We want to follow it inferiorly all the way down till we come down to the pubic symphysis as we hit the bone right here on the right side. Now he has a fairly wide muscle, and even though I have a wide probe, I would have to image this particular rectus abdominis in two sections. I would do the more medial portion, and then I would do the more lateral portion in doing both a superior to inferior slide. Now if I come back up to the midpoint of the umbilicus or so, and I slide laterally past now the rectus abdominis, we can see the interaction here in the junction now between the other abdominal muscles. On top we have the external oblique, we have in the middle the internal oblique, and below that the transversus abdominis. Now at this level about mid-abdomen, ideally we'd like to see the transversus abdominis uh, extend all the way over and just underneath the rectus abdominis partially. But you'll see significant variability in this uh, depending on the patient's size, shape, and status. We also again want to look for disruption of the fascial tissue between the three lateral muscles versus the midline rectus abdominis, as this area can often be widened and have significant injury uh, with abdominal pulls. In other abdominal injuries, you may see intramuscular injury. And again, we'll want to then focus on these three muscles. And we can follow them from a superior portion as I do a short axis slide. And as I do an inferior short axis slide, I can follow them down. Now as you follow them down, you notice that right there, we're losing the external oblique. It's completely going away. So as I come about to the level of the ASIS, which you can see starting to appear on the left, at this point we only have internal oblique and transversus abdominis below. You can see between those, that a bunch of neurovascular structures. And a principle throughout the entire abdomen is that all the neurovascular structures will uh, be present between the second and third layers of the abdominal muscles, whether there are muscles present or whether they're just fascial connective tissues that continue uh, throughout the region. If I go a little bit lower, we'll see the transversus abdominis get smaller and we see a muscle appear on the left. That's the iliacus. The iliacus becomes quite large, as you can see, and follows all the way down into the ilium and into the pelvis.